Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Black Green or Golgari, the Great Hench deck, featuring the 9 mana legendary artifact that says this spell costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures we control, taps to add double green to our mana pool and gain 2 life, and whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under our control, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it and draw a card. So a very powerful card draw engine as soon as we can get it online, and thanks to the help of a Rotting Regisaur, we can even play a Great Hench on turn 4 in this deck, as a Rotting Regisaur a 3 mana 7-6, so it gives the Great Hench a 7 mana discount only costing double green. The downside of the register is that at the beginning of our upkeep we have to discard a card, but the card advantage from the Great Hench more than makes up for it, so these two cards play very well with each other. Taking a look at the rest of the deck, at 1 mana we've got a full playset of Knight of the Ebon Legion, just a very powerful 1 drop in black that we're almost gonna see in every black creature deck from now on. A 1 mana 1-2 one, creature with the threat of activation for 2 and a black, giving it plus 3 plus 3 and death touch until end of turn, so just a nice mana sink for the late game. And at the beginning of your end step, if a player lost 4 or more life this turn, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Knight of the Ebon Legion, so just grows over time and becomes a real threat in the late game despite just costing 1 mana. Then we also have the full play set of Pelt Collector, we're opting for a more low curve approach in this Great Hench deck, some versions don't play Pelt Collector instead opting for more expensive creatures, I just wanted to lower the curve of the deck so we can pressure cheap planeswalkers and then hopefully the Great Hench can take care of our late game. And the Pelt Collector is a 1 mana 1 1 but it doesn't stay that way for long, because whenever another creature we control enters the battlefield or dies, if that creature's power is greater than Pelt Collector's power, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Pelt Collector, so play big stuff. Pelt Collector grows, and as long as Pelt Collector has 3 or more plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, it also gains Trample, so it also has a bit of synergy with the Great Henge if it picks up an extra counter, it's gonna be easier for the Pelt Collector to gain Trample. And of course in a deck playing 3 mana 7, 6 creatures, it's gonna be pretty easy for us to keep growing the Pelt Collector over time. Then at 2 mana we've got a full playset of Growth Chamber Guardian, which is also great in combination with the Great Henge. 2 mana for a 2-2 two -two creature with Adapt 2 for 3 mana, so we can spend 3 mana putting 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on the Growth Chamber Guardian if it didn't already have any plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. And whenever 1 or more plus 1 plus 1 counters are placed on the Growth Chamber Guardian, we can search our library for an additional copy, so we can keep stringing these Growth Chamber Guardians together. And if we ever get lucky enough to combine Growth Chamber Guardian with the Great Henge, that's also great, because then the Guardian enters the battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter, so we don't even have to adapt, and we already get to search up an additional copy of Growth Chamber Guardian, and of course also draw a card from the Great Henge, so you can kind of see how that will escalate pretty quickly, letting us play 4 Guardians and uh, draw 4 cards pretty quickly. Then we also have the full playset of Paradise Druid, giving us a bit of mana fixing and some ramp, since we do have a lot of double black and double green cards in the deck, so the mana base can be a little bit iffy, so the Paradise Druid can help us there. And also just a 2-1 creature that can attack and block. Then we also have the full playset of a Once Upon a Time, which hopefully we can have in our opening hand. Normally it's a 2 mana instant, letting us take a look at the top 5 cards of our library. We can reveal a creature or land and put it into our hand. And outside of the Great Henge, our entire deck is lands and creatures. So Once Upon a Time has a lot of utility, especially considering some of our creatures double up as removal spells. And if this spell is the first spell we've cast this game, we can cast it without paying its mana cost. And given that our deck has a lot of 1-drops, we will often be casting once upon a time on the first turn of the game, instead of sandbagging it for later. And then at 3 mana, of course, we've got our playset of a Rotting Regisaur to go with the Great Henge, as well as a full playset of a Murderous Rider, which doubles up as removal, letting us destroy creatures and planeswalkers with the adventure half of the card, and afterwards still get a 2-3 with lifelink, so just a nice value creature in this deck. And then we also have the full playset of Questing Beast, which has a lot of abilities. 4 mana for a 4-4 Vigilance Death Touch Haste creature. It is legendary, that's the only drawback, so you can't have more than one in play at the same time. But Questing Beast can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less, so it can often ignore small mana dorks and tokens. And combat damage that would be dealt by creatures we control can be prevented, so no fog effects can stop Questing Beast. And when the beast deals combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to target planeswalker that player controls, so it can attack our opponent and their planeswalkers at the same time, which is great. 
And then last but not least, the full playset of Uther Greathenge. It is legendary, but we're still playing four copies since we basically want to draw it every game, and we can always discard additional copies to the Rotting Register anyway, so it's not a big deal that it's legendary. And then taking a look at our mana base, the big new addition from Eldraine are the castles, and Castle Lockthwain is great as a land that can help us replenish our hand in the late game. The drawback is that it enters the battlefield tapped unless we control a swamp, but we do have 10 swamps in the deck, so more often than not it will come into play untapped. And then 3 mana and tapping castle lets us draw a card, and then we lose life equal to the number of cards in our hand, so if we activate this while empty-handed we only lose 1 life, and we do have the murderous rider with a lifelink that can maybe make up for it as well. And then the rest of the mana base is pretty straightforward, 6 basic swamps, 8 basic forests, 4 overgrown tombs doubling up as a swamp as well for the castle, and then 4 copies of Temple of Malady letting us scry 1 when it enters the battlefield tapped. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand seems okay. Uh, temple to maybe help me find a Regisaur to speed up the Great Henge. But we've got some nice mid-range tools here. Facing turn on Pelt Collector. Ooh, once upon a time, I can cast that. Now the sequencing with Temple is interesting, so I want to cast Once Upon a Time first, both in case I find a 1-drop and also so I don't mess up the scry. I did find a 1-drop, I also found a Rotting Regisaur, which I think is going to be my pick. And then play Temple. And I don't think we need Land 4 necessarily. And if we're up against a Gruul deck, they'll have a hard time killing the Regisaur with removal. So hopefully we can live the dream of a turn for the Great Hench. Alright, so we can expect these belt collectors to grow next turn. So what's my plan? I can play Paradise Druid and trade it off. And then keep Growth Chamber Guardian for after the Great Hench, I think that makes sense. So it's just all about preserving our life total and then making sure the Regisaur survives and then the Great Henge plus Guardian should help us take over the late game. Ooh. Grum Gully, the Generous. Still okay with the trade. Well, let's hope uh, Regisaur survives. If my opponent attacks, I'm probably gonna have to take it since I don't want to put Regisaur in harm's way. And Gruul Spellbreaker, alright. Gonna be a 5-5 thanks to Grom Gully. Discard, probably just Temple. And time to get the Great Henge in play. And find a backup Growth Chamber Guardian. Triple Murderous Rider in hand, so don't mind discarding one of them to the Regisaur. Alright, so we're definitely going off here. Don't think I'm attacking, just keep uh, Regisaur back as a blocker for Spellbreaker. And we're pretty far ahead at this point. I guess your opponent could have their own Great Henge at some point and uh, try and keep up with all the card advantage. Not sure what other new tools Gruul decks got with uh, Eldraine. Alright, Domri. Still a very powerful Planeswalker. Are they gonna fight a Regisaur? Alright. It's an even fight. Pelt Collector grows. And now that we have the Great Henge gaining us 2 life, I'm totally okay taking 5. No need to trade, since now I get to take out Domri. Sadly drew the last Guardian, but that's fine. So, I guess I'll start with Belt Collector. Play Guardian. Now this is not going to grow the Pelt Collector, since the plus one counter is not placed as it enters the battlefield, but afterwards as a trigger. So, the uh, Guardian was a 2-2 when it entered the battlefield, so it doesn't grow the Pelt Collector, but Questing Beast is a pretty nice draw here. 
So let's play that. And then... I can force my opponent to chum block the questing beast if they want to save Domri and send these at my opponents. That seems okay. So they could save Domri by chumping the beast. But uh, now the beast gets to take out Domri as well. And yeah, I don't really see how my opponent recovers from this. Another Domri. So now we can Murder Strider the Pelt Collector. If they kill one of my creatures, I still have three attackers, so that should be enough for lethal. Wild beasts are bringing your comeuppance. Pelt Collector attacks. Doesn't really matter here whether I block or not. All right. And get in there. All right, sweet. So that was basically the ideal draw. Turn three Registrar into the Great Henge with the Growth Chamber Guardian to boot. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a bit of an awkward hand with no green mana. So at the very least, I get to play Knight of Ebon Legion into a turn three Registrar, and then I can start pumping the Knight or drawing cards with a castle. So it's not a horrible hand but I can probably do better on 6. Alright, I think this is better. And I'm probably just bottom 1 Pelt Collector. So I get to go Pelt Collector into Druid into hopefully Questing Beast and then have the Great Hench in our back pocket for later. Facing Sacred Foundry tapped, Temple of Malady to pick up. So I could skip my Pelt Collector in order to make sure I can play Questing Beast on Curve even on turn 3, thanks to the Paradise Druid. I think I'm still gonna play the Pelt Collector first. There's a good chance we pick up another untapped land by then, and uh, maybe I'll pick up something else that changes my plan anyway. Alright, Interplanar Beacons, your opponents on the Jeskai Planeswalker deck, which is gonna be tough, since it's a control deck with a lot of sweepers, the fairy bouncing or expensive creatures can be annoying. But uh, we'll try. And then, of course, the Questing Beast is pretty good against the Planeswalker deck. So I'll just play the Paradise Root for now. Attack for two. And there's a lot of different sweepers my opponent can have. Deafening Clarion, Solar Blaze, Time Wipe. And we need to play around all of them a bit differently. The fairy's gonna bounce Spelt Collector, Murderous Rider to draw. So I could just Questing Beast here. Yeah, don't mind it. Also dodges uh, Deafening Clarion. I imagine if my opponent had a Clarion, they wouldn't have played the fairy, and they would have just cast a Clarion there. But I guess their mana situation didn't allow them to cast Clarion since they didn't have a red and white on two separate lands. Alright, it's going to be Fires of Invention, an exciting new card. Does play quite well in this type of deck since the Jeskai Planeswalker deck didn't play many instants, so they're kind of a tap-out deck anyway. So might as well put Fires of Invention in there. And Narset's going to be pretty annoying if we ever get our Great Henge in play. And they found a Time Wipe, so things aren't going well for us, but with a lot of sweepers. So I guess I'll start with Temple, see what's up. Find a Guardian, I guess I'll take that. There's no real point in playing Pelt Collector knowing about the Time Wipe. So I'm just gonna deal some damage while I can. And take out this Narset. And then I can potentially still play my Murderous Rider at instant speed. All right, time wipe for free. That works. All right, time to rebuild, I guess. Pelt Collector into Guardian. And there's Chandra, Awakened Inferno. 
which is going to wipe the board and leave behind a planeswalker. So that wasn't great. And an Ugin too. Yeah, I think we're probably dead here. Sure, like I can kill one of their planeswalkers. But uh, two great henches that are uncastable in hand is not doing me any favors. And they're just gonna keep uh, snowballing card advantage with all these planeswalkers, so... Which one do I even kill? Like, the tokens from Ugin I can potentially get around if I draw another questing beast. Chandra is just gonna kill me, Ugin's gonna provide more card advantage and make more tokens. The minus three from Ugin can also destroy my Great Henge, despite being an artifact that is green. I'll probably kill Ugin. But, uh, yeah, I don't think we are very likely to win this. Triple Beacon also means with every Planeswalker they play, they gain three life. All right, that's giving me some hope. And remember, I can always use the Great Henge just to gain two life, even if I'm not using the mana for anything. So I'll make sure to uh, put a stop on my opponent's end step and do that. Hope it's not too hot for you. So opponent might be flooded since they haven't played anything in a while. So, just gonna have to discard the Great Hench here. At least I still have a Murderous Rider I can play to make sure I draw a card. Knight of Ebon Legion. Alright, so I guess I'm attacking Chandra. Opponent's gonna chump. So do I play Knight of Heaven Legion? I guess I do. Draw another card with the Great Henge. Probably should have done that main phase one, to be honest, in case I drew another Questing Beast. Right, say go. I can pump the Knight of Heaven Legion still. Fay of Wishes, now it does scary. They can search up any card. And they probably have some... Pretty good cards to find. Time Wipe is gonna reset our board once again. Yeah, any deck with this many sweepers is gonna be a rough matchup. We do have some tools against it, like Great Henge is great. If we can get it down early, and our castle also helps, but we're still gonna be unfavored overall. And land a draw. Not what we needed. This would be a great spot for like a Growth Chamber Guardian, for example. Put uh, three creatures in play, draw three cards. Although I guess it would all die to Chandra's minus uh, three as well. I guess in response to the Great Hench trigger, you could still adapt to Growth Chamber Guardian. So it becomes a 4-4 instead of just being a 3-3 that dies to Chandra. Fay of Wish is also very good in combination with Time Wipe, since you can pick it back up again and wish for something else. So I guess I need Murder Strider here, step one. Knight of Avon Legion draws me in two. A lance. Alright, I think we're dead now. So yeah, this is where having one of the castles also would have helped to find a bit more action. But yeah, Fires of Invention, an exciting new card. Definitely a very high power level. Opponent had another one in hand, of course not great in multiples, but they could just discard it to the Fae of Wishes to wish once again. So our opponent's deck seems pretty cool. Definitely need to experiment with uh, Fires of Invention some more. No 
I really want to be using this in combination with mana sinks. So cards like Fear of Wishes are great, cards like the uh, Red Cavalier, letting you sink all your extra mana into the ability is great, and can also discard additional copies of Fires of Invention. Planeswalkers are pretty good since you can keep getting value from them over and over again, and this Casualties of War is going to prompt a concession for me. And the fact that it ignores colored mana means you can get pretty creative with your sideboard cards. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, I think we can keep this. And then once upon a time can help us find a 2-drop or a 3-drop to smooth out our curve. And we did find a Growth Chamber Guardian. I guess that'll do over Murderous Rider. We don't have double black yet, don't want to be forced to take a land. So I'll take Guardian, and then I get to Curve Pelt Collector into Growth Chamber Guardian. And then maybe Adapt on turn 3. And then uh, maybe we'll have picked up a fourth land for the Questing Beast on 4. And keep curving out. Alright, there's a Great Hench, so that's a nice late game play for us. Let's just play Guardian. So I guess the card we want to draw the most here, besides just lands, is a Rotting Regisaur. Opponent on Junt. And they're gonna pass a turn. They might be keeping up the uh, Giant with a Stomp ability, dealing 2 damage at instant speed. So I don't think I'm gonna adapt the Growth Chamber Guardian into 2 open mana. So instead I'm probably just gonna play Temple and play Knight, and then next turn I can play Questing Beast. So let's attack. Alright, no removal from our opponent. Let's just play Temple. And now that we have land 4, I'm just looking for more creatures. Questing Beast is legendary. So if we have a Questing Beast in play, the Great Henge is still gonna cost us 5 mana. So I don't know if I want to keep a second beast in case I kill the first one, or if I want to dig for Regisaur or land 5. I think I'm gonna bottom it, but I'm not entirely sure here. And then play Knight. We do also have the Growth Chamber Guardian that could potentially grow up to be a 4-4. So... I think land 5 might be more important than keeping another Questing Beast on top. Knight also picks up an extra plus 1 counter since we dealt 4 damage. And we'll have to wait and see if our opponent was indeed keeping up removal. Alright, and there's a Stomp. So... They were forced to play it on the Knight, instead of on the Growth Chamber Guardian. Third land untapped. For Lucky Clover, alright, so our opponent's playing the Junt Adventure deck, which I've also been having a lot of fun with. And Lobstruck Beast now making two 1-1 one -one tokens. Ooh, that's a nice draw, Rotting Regisaur. So the only removal for big creatures that we need to be worried about is going to be the Murderous Rider from the opponent, which requires double black. So I don't know if we need to play around that. I think I'm just going to end up playing the Rotting Regisaur and then attacking with Belt Collector. If I attack with both, they probably double block Belt Collector. So I don't think I want to do that. So yeah, let's just play Regisaur. And now the interesting question is whether I play my land or not. Because if I do play my land, I'll have to discard Questing Beast to the Rotting Regisaur. So there is a bit of downside. Especially considering they can kill my Regisaur at instant speed with a Murderous Rider. Make me discard and still kill Regisaur, I'll be unable to play the Great Henge. And then I'll be left with no action. So I think I'm going to keep plan in hand because of that. So... I can at the very least discard my land, and then if I draw land 4 I can play Questing Beast, otherwise if the Regisaur is still alive I can play the Great Henge. It's gonna be Innkeeper, alright. So unless they go Swamp into Murderous Rider, the Regisaur should be safe. Alright, Overgrown Tomb untapped, and another Innkeeper, alright. So our opponent will gain a lot of card advantage from these Innkeepers, but at least I'll get to play my Great Henge here. Falmar Knight, also pretty good against a Regisaur. As a 1-1 Death Touch. Drawing two cards with the Innkeeper. So I'll discard my lands. Pick up a land, great. So now I get to go... The Great Henge. Into my Questing Beast. And the Questing Beast can uh, ignore all these 1-1 creatures. And smash in there. 
for uh, 5 damage. And then I could attack with the Pelt Collector, which has Trample. I probably should have attacked with everyone here, since if my opponent puts the Falmar Knight on the Regisaur, then they don't have any great blocks on uh, the Growth Chamber Guardian or the Pelt Collector. So an attack with everyone would have been fine. But uh, now our opponent's just taking a lethal, so they probably didn't want to do that. But uh, alright, I'll take it. So the Great Henge getting it done against Jund Adventures. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand seems acceptable. As always, hoping to draw a Regisaur when we have the Great Henge in hand. Up against turn 1 Goose. I guess we'll lead with Pelt Collector here. Do I need to shock with Overgrown Tomb? If I shock, I have the option of playing double Knight of Evil Legion on turn 2. But I'm probably just going to play the Guardian anyway. And then turn 3 I can either adapt the Growth Chamber Guardian or play some Knights. Temple of Mystery. So your opponent could be on the blue-green ramp deck featuring Gilded Goose and Oko from Eldraine. Alright, another Pelt Collector. Could play another Pelt Collector first, so it can pick up a counter from Guardian. But I think I would rather attack with the one in play as a 2-2, so it can attack past the Geese. But uh, yeah, Double Goose is pretty scary, since they could already cast a Nissa here. And we don't really have an answer lined up. No Questing Beast, no Murderous Rider. And Oko is also very good against the Great Henge, since it can also turn artifacts into 3-3 creatures, which means they can shut off our Great Henge. It's gonna be their own Questing Beast. Hits us for 4. I imagine my opponent just takes it if I attack with Growth Chamber Guardian, and if that's the case I'm gonna wanna play a triple 1-drop. So I will shock with Overgrown Tomb. Of course, if they block, I'm going to be forced to adapt. Alright, we've got a lot of uh, creatures in play. And a lot of different activated abilities between the Knights and the Guardian. A Lostra Beast. Alright, so maybe not a ramp deck and just playing a more of the new cards in general. Castle Lockthwain. So I'm still a turn away from playing the Great Henge. Now if I dab Growth Chamber Guardian, then next turn I could play the Great Henge for 5 mana. But now this Lovestruck Beast is um, kind of an issue. So I guess I'll just play Castle and play Defense. And we'll see what my opponent does. Ideally, I would be able to keep my Growth Chamber Guardian around so I can play the Great Henge next turn, but I might be forced to spend my mana trading off with uh, the opponent's beasts. As they both get in there. So I could take 9 and fall to 1, and then next turn my Growth Chamber Guardian can trade off for the beasts, and I can maybe uh, chum block the Lovestruck Beast. I could chum block the Lovestruck Beast right now, which is also reasonable. I guess I'll do that in case they have a second Questing Beast next turn. Because then I won't have the option of chum blocking anymore. Now what I could have also considered is doing some sort of triple block with Growth Chamber Guardian and Knight of Evan Legion on the Lovestruck Beast, and then I can pump whichever one they put first when uh, they assign blockers. The problem there is if they put the Growth Chamber Guardian first, I'm going to lose it regardless, and I kind of need it to play my Great Henge next turn. Take action, find another one. So I get to play my Henge. Don't think I'm attacking, so... Play this. Play Guardian. Gain some life, draw some cards, find another Guardian, and go to try and stabilize from here. 
So now the 4-4 can trade for the Questing Beasts, and I can try and trade off for the Lovestruck Beast as well. We've got uh, Great Henge padding our life total. Hopefully they don't have Oko to turn it into a 3-3. So am I okay with this trade? Yeah, this seems fine. I don't have any creatures in hand that can grow Pelt Collector anyway. Could also, I guess, double block with Knights of Avon Legion. Maybe that's better. Alright, I guess I'll do this. Don't really expect any instant speed interaction from my opponent. They could also decide to take out both Knights of the Avon Legion, which would also be acceptable. Belt Collector grows up to a 3-3. But given Growth Chamber Guardian in hand, I'm going to be busy spending my mana on casting creatures instead of having the mana to pump the Knight of Evan Legion. So sometimes Knight is better than Pelt Collector in this spot, given that my mana is going to be tied up in uh, casting creatures. I don't think the Knight has a ton of value for us, as we see another Lovestruck Beast. Alright, so we've got a few options. I'll start by playing the beast, since I'm going to do that regardless. And see what I draw from that. And then play another guardian. Take action. And I'm pretty happy to trade off questing beast, since I picked up another one. So let me attack. Since of course Questing Beast is legendary. And now I could cast Once Upon a Time to maybe find, let's say, Murder Strider if my opponent plays a Planeswalker. I could play another Guardian. I think I'll play Guardian for now. And there's no Guardians left. One thing we could have potentially done if we had more mana is play Guardian and then in response to the Great Hench trigger, adapt. So it becomes a 5-5 uh, five five instead of just a 3-3, three three. but yeah. A great Hench plus Growth Chamber Guardian to the rescue. It was definitely looking pretty sketchy for a second there, but as soon as we got the Great Hench in play, things started uh, snowballing to our advantage and we managed to get there. So yeah, as you can see, the deck is pretty fun to play. It's a creature deck at its core, and then it has some interesting lines of play with all the activated abilities, card advantage from Castle Lockthwain and from the Great Henge. And you've got some nice answers for Planeswalkers between Questing Beast and Murderous Rider, so you're not cold to them. But uh, the deck we lost to, the Jeskai Planeswalker deck, something with a lot of sweeper effects and uh, potential answers to your Great Henge, is probably still going to be favored, but the deck definitely has a lot of game. So yeah, that's going to wrap things up for today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.